In this video, we will review the iPhone 12 Pro from a smartphone filmmaker's perspective and we will answer the question whether if it's worth upgrading from a previous model. Hey, what's up guys? Julian here from smartphonefilmmakingpro.com and today I will give you my thoughts on the all new iPhone 12 Pro. But basically most things that I will be saying in this video about the Pro will also apply for the regular iPhone 12 the 12 Pro Max and even the Mini. So first off, let's start with the price. And it of course varies a bit depending on where you live. But here in Europe, you have to pay about 1,150 euros for an iPhone 12 Pro. And for the same money, you could of course get quite some video gear. Definitely not the highest end, but something like a used Panasonic GH5 with a lens and a love mic and a little light would be possible. And I know you could get better results with a proper camera like like the GH5, but it's crazy what you can produce these days with a smartphone. But a smartphone has the huge, huge advantage that you always have it with you. And at the end of the day, the best camera is always the camera that you have with you. But more about that later on in the conclusion. So let's talk about the three different lenses that you get with the iPhone. First off, let's start with the ultra wide. It has a 120 degree field of view and an aperture of an f 2.4. And if you have never used an ultra wide angle lens, I tell you, this is really fun. Quality wise, this might not be the absolute best of the three, especially when it comes to lower light shooting, you start to see some noise in the shadows. But when shooting on the ultra wide combined with a gimbal, well, I can tell you this combination is really powerful and it offers a ton of possibilities and the results that you get are stunning. For example, you could just use this combo to shoot some real estate videos that will look really good and really professional, at least if you know how to use it properly and how to film real estate videos. We do currently work on a new course where we teach you ways on how you can make money as a smartphone filmmaker. So if this is something that you are interested in, well, just make sure to watch the free webinar just below that like button. The second camera on the iPhone is the wide angle, the standard field of view lens with an aperture of an f1.6. And this is hands down the best by far. If you need to have the image with the most details and the highest quality, this is the lens that you should be using. Especially if you are shooting in lower light situations, this is definitely the lens that you should choose. And the last camera you get on the iPhone is the telephoto lens with a 2x on the regular Pro and a 2.5x on the Pro Max. On the standard iPhone 12, you do not get this telephoto lens at all. And in my opinion, the quality of the telephoto was massively improved. I did not like the way it looked on the iPhone 10 and also not really liked it on the 11 Pro. But here I feel like the image is really sharp and overall very good. So a great upgrade. So next up, let's talk about the biggest step up to its predecessor. And that is the 10 bit Dolby Vision HDR. And if you don't know what HDR is, this stands for high dynamic range and this will basically give you more room in the dark parts of your image and it will also give you more room in the highlights and overall give your videos more details. And since the iPhone 10 uses a 10-bit color depth when shooting in HDR, you also have a lot more flexibility when grading your footage in the post-production. The videos straight out of camera look amazing, but if you want to add a specific look, if you want to make it more filmic or cinematic, you now can really tweak the image just as you like. And just recently, Filmic Pro updated its app to also support the 10-bit HDR shooting. And also the editing programs are slowly but surely updating to support the footage natively. And if you want to learn more about editing and grading and also shooting cinematic videos with your smartphone, well, you should definitely check out our full online course. And as I've said before, just click the first link below that like button. So next up, let's talk about the image stabilization. The image stabilization on iPhones has has always been pretty good. Especially if you are shooting handheld, the IBIS smoothed out the micro jitters pretty good. But with the iPhone 12, I feel like they improved it even further. When using the iPhone 12 with a gimbal, the shots you get are shockingly steady. There is no jerkiness whatsoever. And even when shooting handheld, the in-body image stabilization just works tremendously well. But will it replace a 3-axis gimbal? 
In my opinion, no, of course not. And that's also not the goal or the purpose of a good in-body stabilization. But it will definitely make your handheld shots less jittery and more stable overall. For smooth walking shots, you should still use a 3-axis gimbal. And in case you're looking for a 3-axis gimbal, I have two videos on my channel where I compare three of the most popular options that you can buy right now. But as always, there are just different tools for different shooting scenarios. And that's also why I love shooting with a smartphone because it's super small and you always have it with you and you can create amazing videos with it, at least if you know how to use it. And in the past I had so many occasions where I didn't bring my 1DX and regretted it in the end because I missed amazing shots. And well now I just take the phone out of my pocket and capture the moments just as they are and the quality it delivers, well it absolutely blows me away. So the final question, should you get it? or should you upgrade from say an iPhone 11? And in my opinion, the iPhone 12 is the biggest upgrade camera wise, well, basically ever. I had the iPhone 10 and then upgraded to the 11 Pro and the upgrade was okay. It was decent, but nothing that blew my mind. But now with the 12, the quality and the details and especially the amount of room for tweaking in the post-production that it gives me is truly amazing. So if money doesn't play a huge role for you, I can highly recommend that you upgrade upgrade to the iPhone 12. And if you are on a tighter budget, then I would say just use what you have and learn how to use it properly. Knowing how to utilize what you have is far more important than having the newest gear on your hands. And in case you want to step up your smartphone video quality and you want to learn more and you want to learn how to get similar results like I do, well, I can highly recommend that you should watch our free 45 minute webinar where I teach the five secrets to achieving cinematic smartphone footage. In the last three months, over a thousand people have already watched the webinar and many of them have also joined our full course. So join our community and if you have any further questions, please let me know.